Yeah, we're doing another one of these videos. Um, gotta respond. Uh, the UK election, at least the exit polls, have been done with. And unless the exit polls are wildly off base, it was a landslide win for the Tories. So let's talk about that. How? Well, the answer is actually really simple, and you've heard it before, not just from me, but from other people, but I think it always bears uh, repeating. Conservatives don't care about facts. Um, they just don't. They might have once, sometime in the past, sometime before I was born, but they don't now, and they haven't for a while. They are, in large part, the voters, not the acting politicians and bankers and what have you. Um, they are the product of decades of media indoctrination that has utterly insulated them from reality as it functions. They are, um, in a democratic sense, not people anymore. And I mean that in, in the abstraction, when we look at a functioning democracy, when we think, how does it work? We expect the citizenry be educated enough to be able to advocate in their own interests. That's why public education is a huge component of democracy. We want people to be educated enough to be able to function in a democracy. And it's funny because it seems now we have reached a point where it is not a lack of information, but rather an overabundance of bad information that has led to people no longer being capable of functioning in a democracy. And I mean that sincerely. I'm not doing some bandying like, oh, we're entitled to our opinions. No. If you're a conservative, if you're a Tory voter in, um, in the United Kingdom, then you are either uh, an idiot or you are one of the very, very small people who benefit uh, extensively from the policies of austerity that have been ruining Britain for some time now and will, it seems, continue to do so. So how did we get here? I mean, Boris Johnson is is unelectable. It really, really genuinely is. He's a, a, a halfwit who runs from interviews. He's failed to bring about his visions of Brexit. He lies frequently. Um, his, his campaign promises are nonsense. He backpedals off of statements he's made previously. He recently hid in a refrigerator to avoid um, uh, being asked tough questions by a reporter. He did essentially no campaigning for this election. It seems as though his... Sorry, that was my dishes. I had soup. It seems as though the um, the party officials, the Tories, tried to keep him from as many interviews as possible because when they have to answer questions, they never come out looking that good because they don't have the answers people want. When you're asked the question, what will you do to make the country better, and you won't be, it's in your best interest to avoid the question altogether because even answering with a lie opens you up to the scrutiny of fact-checkers, which is, of course the longtime enemy of the Tory voter, or the conservative in general, I suppose. Boris Johnson is highly unelectable. So is Donald Trump, but we got him. We might get him again in 2020, you know. Um, because these people are, the voters for these people are, no longer functioning citizens of a democracy. They're zealots. They're as capable of making informed decisions on the state of affairs of this place as a uh, as a a cartoonishly devoted religious person is on making decisions concerning uh, school activities uh, um, during middle school prom or student activities during middle school prom, they're comically out of their depth. They're not capable. They have they have a message, and they'll do that thing. But they don't care. They can't be reasoned or argued with. They aren't respond. They don't respond to facts or figures or charts. Uh, the expertise of others can't convince them. Data can't convince them, and they don't care. Which is one of the reasons why, if you go online right now and you look at any of these uh, these condolences boards for the Labour voters, uh, you'll find the Tories there making fun of them, quite spitefully at that. And why wouldn't they? Cause to them, it's just a game. It's not some solemn, you know, uh, tug of war to determine which policies will rule the country. Most of them are just angry losers who are doing everything in their power to milk the brief glimmers of satisfaction they get out of their life before they return to the exact same policies of austerity that the labor voters do for the next four or five years. So, or, or longer, you know, because that's all they get out of it. <clears throat> And same for the Trump voter, too. 
so smug, owning the libs, do a wonderful job owning the libs, and then you take a step back. After these people are done owning the libs, they go back to their day job, which is uh, a crippling medical debt, um, working multiple jobs just to pay rent, life getting worse by every conceivable measure. But they're fine, you know, because things are getting worse for them, sure, but things are getting worse faster for the people they don't like. See, it's okay if they go back to the UK. It's okay if a Tory voter and a Labour voter suffer equally under British austerity, as long as some marginal aspects of the Labour voting pool, immigrants maybe, LGBT people, disabled people, suffer a little more. That's the game for them. It's a zero-sum game in which the misery of the marginalized is their privilege. It's their delight. And I don't think they're sociopathic, mind you. I don't think this is some sudden outburst of sociopathy somehow contracted amongst hundreds of millions. I think it's a very deliberate product of a very deliberate um, disinfo campaign put up by billionaires who pay media, um, uh, <clears throat> who pay um, media analysts and TV spokespersons to disseminate information in a way that controls the way in which they respond to, well, the world, to reality. Um, it's a very deliberate system, and it's broken our democracy. Our democracy can't function this way. It's it's not possible. There is no argument for voting for Trump or voting for uh, Boris Johnson, unless you're an uber-wealthy person, a billionaire, a banker, something along those lines. Or you can somehow make a compelling argument, which I have yet to hear, which is that fucking over immigrants and non-white people will somehow make the country better. I've heard a lot of people who have attempted to make that argument. I have it hasn't really hasn't really sunk in yet, you know? I've heard a lot of different strategies. We go we have some full neo-nazi and some are just the sargon of akkad types where they pretend it's not an ethnostate they're advocating for when they are in fact advocating for an ethnostate. It's there's such a so much diversity ironically in how the anti-diversity crowd tries to argue their um, deeply irrational talking points. So what do we do? Well, it's not impossible for some of these people to be brought over, but you knew that. Um, but there's a better way. Let me Google a graph. I've been showing this a lot off on, on stream lately, you know. It's gotten to be quite popular, this little graph. And I'm going to speak in it for perhaps the not even close to the final time, in all likelihood. I love it when I right-click in these images and they only give me thumbnail-sized versions. Beautiful! United States of Apathy. I know this is in England, but look. It is a county-by-county uh, county breakdown of the United States of America. Um, if voting for nobody, if abstaining from the vote, the 2016 U.S. presidential election, counted as a vote for someone called nobody. 445 electoral votes uh, swept the nation. I haven't seen an equivalent of this chart for the U.K., but I imagine things are comparable over there, though maybe not this bad. These are the people that we should be reaching. These tens and hundreds of millions of people who don't vote because they feel there's no one who represents their interests, who don't vote because they feel as though um, they don't have time to take out of their day, they've got kids, they've got work, who don't vote because they genuinely don't know what's going on. These are the people that we can reach. Um, every time we get young people signed up to vote, we aid the left. Every time... We push for a federal holiday being instated during voting day. That's here in the U.S., we, though it has yet to happen. That's a move for us. Anytime we try to reach out to these people to show them we represent their interests too, that's our move. Because the red blocks on that map are, I'm going to be perfectly honest, in a, in a political sense, in a democratic sense, they aren't really people anymore. You can count on them to represent their own interests and respond to the ebbs and flows of democracy, to respond to the needs of the Republic, to respond to the needs of the United Kingdom, about as effectively as you could expect a rock in a savanna to move with the wind. 
Uh, it's no longer in that respect part of the, uh, it doesn't respond. It's not part of the ecosystem. Uh, it's genuinely disgusting. I, I, I do believe that there are conservatives to be reached out to, but for the most part, I'll be perfectly clear. I, I, my feelings towards these people are irreprehensible. Um, and often it's not even their fault. It's not even their fault they're that misguided or stupid or hateful in the case of the bigots, of which most of them are. It's just the system that we have let exist through the perpetuity of hierarchy, through allowing an uber-wealthy group to uh, uh, pay off media outlets and disseminate information that ensure their perpetuity up there. Capitalism. <sighs> anyway, I know this is all very disheartening, but things were all going to get, they were always going to get worse before they got better. So, cheer up, uh, lad, mate. Um, and remember that as overwhelming as the tide against us may sometimes seem, and it is in many respects, uh, the fact remains nonetheless that their electoral supremacy relies exclusively on the ability to break the human brain until it stops being able to recognize what is and is not good for it, to destroy their ability to perceive information rationally, essentially. And um, that's a terrible thing, but it's also a process that can be undone. It's an unnatural process, one that has to be maintained through enormous amounts of money. And if we break that system, things will naturally return to a more amicable state of affairs, one in which people will be more receptive to the facts, and that is a state of affairs that benefits us. Hopefully. 